What's up, you beautiful bastards? It's been a while. Raziel's back again. And uh, Final Fantasy 16 sucks. That's it. Thanks for watching the video. Now, I really, I'm going to go into why I think Final Fantasy 16 is overall not a good Final Fantasy game. But first, let me preface. Remember that uh, just because I don't like something that you may like is not a personal attack on you. So, grow the fuck up. Let's do the drop and I'll get into what the hell I thought went wrong with Final Fantasy 16. I am Razio. So I initially had written a uh, entire script for this video, uh, and then after going through it, I'm like, man, this video is going to be really long if I follow the script. So instead, I put up points that I wanted to hit and kind of just freelance it and uh, see how that see how that ends up. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do that. So. Uh, I thought it would be good to preface uh, why, like where I'm coming from in terms of the, the, the Final Fantasy series. Now, Final Fantasy was what got me into RPGs. I, I know I don't necessarily look it, but I'm old as fuck, okay? 40 years old. My first RPG ever was Final Fantasy IV, also known as Final Fantasy II for the Super Nintendo, uh, right when it came out um, way back in the early 90s, and that's what got me hooked to RPGs and games in general. So I have a lot of love and respect for the Final Fantasy uh, genre. My absolute favorite Final Fantasy of all time is easily Final Fantasy Tactics, with Final Fantasy 7 being a close second. And if you didn't watch my review of the Final Fantasy 7 remake, you should, because I hated that piece of shit. Uh, totally ruined my childhood, but that's neither here nor there. Let's just keep moving on and forget that thing even exists. Um, but I loved Final Fantasy uh, right into Final Fantasy 6, you know, Final Fantasy um, 7, obviously. 8, I wasn't a huge fan of. 9 was fantastic. 10 was pretty good, but by the time 10 came out, I was in my first semester of college. And so I and I didn't have a PS2, so I, I, I didn't really play that until much later afterwards. Same with 12, which I didn't really get into. Obviously, 11, 14, they're online games. I don't really count them, um, especially... I kind of wonder why they didn't just... Why they included 11 and, and 14 as numbered Final Fantasy games. I feel they should have just been their own thing. Like Final Fantasy Online, maybe Final Fantasy Online 2, or they just call it by its title, Realm Reborn or whatever. But that's not my call. That's not the point of this video anyway. Uh, the point of me bringing up my background is I've been a huge RPG fan and a huge Squaresoft, Square Enix fan for a long time. You know, playing games like Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana were really fond uh, childhood memories for me, and I still love them. I, I still think Chrono Trigger is the best... RPG of all time, but that's, again, getting off track. So, with Final Fantasy, I've been a pretty uh, strict uh, traditionalist, I guess you could say, in terms of Final Fantasy games, and the the ones I mentioned earlier, 4, 6, 7, Tactics, 9, I think were the best, you know, Square Enix's, Squaresoft's peak in terms of story development. They were just fantastic games and had really good stories. And um, Final Fantasy, though, has changed a lot since then. Um, and it kind of lost me around Final Fantasy X because they started going way more into these different ideas in terms of, you know, aesthetic. It kind of went away from the medieval theme. It kind of went into more of like a modern mixed in into maybe even steampunk type ideas into, you know, just straight up metrosexual like... I don't know what the fuck Final Fantasy 15 was, but and I never played 13 either. It didn't interest me at all. So you can see how the the franchise really evolved, and I think it, uh, in some ways, devolved and lost a lot of its initial fan base, which is is fine. Um, I think Square ran into the same problem a lot of big companies run into, where trying to reinvent the wheel when it's not necessary and trying to fix what isn't broken, right? But it's it is what it is. Um. So needless to say, when they announced Final Fantasy 16 and I saw the Final Fantasy Tactics, part of the Tactics team was involved. The Yoshi P was involved. Now, he's been the main person director of Final Fantasy 14, which, you know, is an MMO, but I really enjoyed for a long time before I quit that game. And uh, that it was very medieval focused again. So I was pretty psyched. I mean, I hadn't been psyched for a, a Final Fantasy, like single player Final Fantasy title for a decade or more. And so I was really, really pumped about Final Fantasy 16. But, um, it kind of fell flat on its face for me. I beat the game pretty, fairly quickly. The reason why it's taken me so long to get this review up is I've been going through some medical issues and I was on voice rest and I couldn't talk, so, uh, yeah, but this is, this is where we're at. So, the big thing, before I get into all this, 
the minor things that I noticed I didn't like about 16, which would be forgivable if this first main thing wasn't an issue, which it is. The first main thing and the overall problem with Final Fantasy 16 is it's shallow. Um, the story is extremely shallow. Now, in Final Fantasy games, stories uh, is the most important thing by far. Absolutely by far the most important aspect. But if you notice, if you look at all the Final Fantasy games, it's not like they have some amazing overarching plot that has all these twists and turns. Not really. Final Fantasy IV, you know, you look at the main... It always is someone trying to take over or destroy the world, right? And in Final Fantasy like IV, you know, it's first it's Baron and the, the King of Baron and the Red Wings which transfers into, oh, it's the Four Fiends are behind it, which transfers into, no, this guy named Golbez is behind it, which the twist, Golbez is your main character's brother, to Ziormus is behind, is manipulating Golbez, right? So you have all that. But it's still the same story, the same arc doesn't change. There's a guy or an entity trying to take over and or destroy the world. Final Fantasy VI, uh, the Empire, which morphs into, you know, um, Kefka, which then morphs into insane Kefka still, one take over, destroy the world. Final Fantasy VII, uh, Shinra, then it goes into Sephiroth, and then Genova slash Sephiroth at the end, right? So, that, that also... Still, the, the, the basic plot isn't that great, right? It's not that deep. Um, same with Final Fantasy IX. You know, you got Kuja. I mean, the, the Queen brand, then into Kuja, and then into Garlean, and then back into to Kuja again. So it's, but with the same overarching theme, with some, you know, subtle changes in, in character arcs and stuff. But the biggest thing that makes Final Fantasy stories so good is the character development. I mean, look at the cast of characters in Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy IV, Final Fantasy VII. So much of the story is seeing each individual character's arc. And there's a ton of characters in like six, right? Final Fantasy VI and it's so many characters that you can constantly swap between. And outside of the special characters, they're not really involved in the story. You know, like Gogo, Namaro, and Mog. You, they all have such huge backgrounds and that's what forms the story and the ties to the game. So when there's big payoffs in the story and the overarching story, because you've been with these characters for their development, the payoff works big uh and you know i'm not saying this to brag or anything but i mean shit this is what my college degree is in is storytelling and you know as an actor and studying scripts and you know the the over arcing construction of a story is what i've studied you know I practically got a master's degree in. so <laughs> what a waste of time i mean for someone else that would be an incredible waste of time it's so bold of you to choose that it's incredible. You must be a very, very strong person. Fuck. Anyway, uh, yeah. So you see in Final Fantasy 16. Now, Final Fantasy 16 has these big moments, has these big overarching moments, but because the the character development is so poor and so shallow, the payoff isn't there. You don't care. A lot of big, gorgeous, cinematic moments in Final Fantasy 16 that just feel hollow and empty because you don't care enough about the characters. Also, how the character stories aren't told is each character has to have a, a character arc, right? Where they start in one place and you see them change and develop over the course of the story. Almost every character in Final Fantasy uh, 6, you know, 9, 4, 7, you see this and you actively participate in so those big moments pay off. While in Final Fantasy 16, you, either the characters have no arc... Or their arc happens completely off screen. Like, and, and there's going to be some spoilers in here, so there's no way I can really tell you these points without spoiling some things. But like the main character, you know, um, Clive, he he doesn't really change that much. He's a little different when he's a kid in the beginning, but then throughout the story, he doesn't really change that much at all. His motivations don't change. He's going to be jo he, first. He wants revenge for Joshua, thinking Joshua was dead, to directly going into. He's, he's Josh Jewish he Shield, which is how he started in the beginning. Shield, oh no, my brother's dead, I want revenge. Oh wait, no, he's not dead. I'm his shield. Like, that's just how it goes, the whole story. And him and the character Jill have a lot of development, but it all happens in a period of five years off screen. You don't see any of it. So it's, there's no payoff there. Um, even, even more so, uh, like the main villain is so obscure and out there and doesn't have an arc and isn't involved enough for you to really give a shit about either. A couple characters have some arcs that are okay, like Sid and, and whatnot, but for the most part, all the big moments don't work because there's no build-up for these characters. There's no story arc for these characters, so it just feels empty and hollow and shoved in your face and 
and and yeah so that's the story is has a good foundation in 16 but it was it was executed very poorly and the characters were just empty and shallow which was really really unfortunate for me because um clive was one of the when i saw him in the trailers and whatnot was one of the first characters in a long time in a final fantasy game i was really excited about because he wasn't like you know didn't look like a huge pussy like titus um from final fantasy 10 or you know the main character of 15 he looked really genuinely like a cool traditional classic final fantasy character and with it and it just didn't pay off and then let's go on to the next part square has fallen into this trap of Instead of using special effects to help tell a story, they're using a story to help tell special effects. So they have all these giant cinematic moments, these huge, you know, icon fights, and it just really quickly devolves from being, oh, this is kind of cool, to you're just watching this fight and hardly participating. I don't call pressing R1 or square every once in a while as participating. Um, cinematic, over-the-top icon fights that are really quickly degenerate into like 1990s Power Ranger type anime shit non-stop and you just get so bored because it doesn't mean anything because it, it's shoved in so often and they keep escalating look how cool it is Titans like he's as big as a you know he's huge now look at him he's as big as a mountain now look at him he's half the size of the planet and you're just climbing up and fighting like I don't care man it's just not it's way over the top and again there's no build up to make me care about it so, the most important thing to all Final Fantasy games is absent in Final Fantasy 16, which is good character development and story. Characters are what make the stories of Final Fantasies. I mean, look at Final Fantasy Tactics. You had, you know, the church, which was the ultimate enemy. You had um, the two warring sides of War of the Lions, you know, the black and white lion fighting each other. You had those. Uh, all these players, but... The character development was so rich and it came at the right times when you find out, you know, your brother was betraying and your other brother had no idea. And, you know, everyone's poisoning each other and killing each other to gain power in these wars and all this stuff. Um, and on the sidelines, what Delita was doing, and it, it was just fantastic, right? The storytelling was fantastic. It was amazing. As good, if not better than a book. But then you look at 16 and none of that, none of that exists. The, the characters are so shallow, their motivations are so basic or non-existent. Most of the character development happens off screen if there is any. And it's... There's huge cinematic moments that look gorgeous, but they just have no payoff. Uh, they don't work because there's no basic premise for these characters. Um, you, there's, you don't really go on a journey with these characters in Final Fantasy 16. The same way you went on like Cloud's journey in 7 and Tifa and, and Eris. Like, you have that huge payoff like in 7, right? Where Eris dies. But you got to be with her for the whole first disc, and you see her, her her relationship with the other characters and Cloud grow closer and change and evolve and grow throughout the um, the first disc. And then when she dies, that moment is huge. I mean, I, I was practically crying like a bitch the first time I saw that when I was a kid. I was like, there's no way they killed her off, but they did. And it was pretty... That's that's how you do a payoff. And Square's lost that, that art. But anyway, that's... Um, the first and major underlying. If this was not an issue, all the other complaints I'm about to go into wouldn't matter. Okay, now the minor things that drove me nuts about Final Fantasy 16. The side quests. And how they're... I mean, I'm sorry, but Yoshi P, I think, has spent way too much time on Final Fantasy 14 because... And they did this. It's not just him, because they did this shit in Final Fantasy 7 Remake. Where the, and you see... The first when I see those little exclamation points... MMO style quests above characters' heads. I'm like, fuck. It's just so bad. It's we don't even like those in MMOs. Those quests suck dick in MMOs. They're awful. No one likes dailies and those meaningless side quests. And now that they're being shoved into single player RPGs, like Final Fantasy 16, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and and you're just seeing these like it's no stop. We don't like this. I hate it. And most of the side quests don't serve any purpose. They're like boring MMO style fetch quests. I mean, you have a couple outliers that will unlock things like your chocobo and um and 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 certain mechanics in the game in the exact same format that the certain exclamation points do it in Final Fantasy 14, which is an MMO. I'm sorry, but MMO elements of any shape kind do not belong in a single player game, especially a single Final Fantasy game. Single player Final Fantasy game that's just no, 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 no. It's cancer. Okay, it's absolute cancer. Um, 
And the thing is, is the side quests, at least in Final Fantasy 4, 6, 7, 9, Tactics, they still served a purpose. They were an empty fetch quest or unlock a special thing quest. They were character, they were more character development and you didn't find them with some guy with an exclamation point above his head. You actually had to take characters to certain places for these to unlock. Example, in the world of Ruin in Final Fantasy VI, taking Cyan to the sunken dome and castle, which you don't have to do. But when you do, it unlocks special things for Cyan and more character development for him. You know, Final Fantasy VII, what you do with um, Vincent and when you find Lucretia and all that stuff, like in, in the cave. You don't have to do that, but when you do, it's a huge character development, which brings you closer to that character, right? It's, But they don't do this in, in 16. It's just meaningless rep-building bullshit from an MMO. Doesn't belong here. Okay, now let's get into the other big elephant in the room, the combat. Now, I, I, I fucked around with the combat... Um, and I could say a million things about this, but I'm going to keep it simple. I, I tried both story mode, where it literally means you can hold your controller and just press square and you'll never lose. Ever. It'll just do it for you. Especially if you have that item equipped that does your combos for you. It's an actual item in the game that you get right out of the gate that does that. So you don't have to fucking play the game. It'll practically play it for you. Into, I did the more action base, which was, I admittedly, more fun. But it's still just mashing buttons in a lot of ways. And it looks cool as, as shit, but it just doesn't feel as satisfying as the old turn-based combat did. Um, shit, Final Fantasy VII Remake's combat was 10 times better than 16. But I, even then, I would love to just go back to traditional turn-based. I don't know why Square thinks people don't like it. I love it. A lot of people, real friend, uh, fans of Final Fantasy, love turn-based combat. I don't know why. You can't just make it look as cool as the action-based. Maybe add a little action in there, but keep it turn-based like Final Fantasy always was the first, you know? Fucking 12 games. But, um... Anyway... Yeah, it, it, the combat looks cool, but it, it, again, it feels pretty empty. And, um... The, the systems behind it, like the... Summoning system, you equip summons... It, it's it's interesting. Is it is it as interesting as, like, Espers in 6 or Materia in 7? No. Or even the, the skill tree in 10? No. But it wasn't awful. It wasn't bad. It just didn't really stand out as being that impressive to me. Now, here's another huge issue that I have, the next point. Something that I've always loved about Final Fantasy games, and, and RPGs in general, which make the game, is the music. The music in... I still listen to reorchestrated versions from Zelda games, you know, all the Final Fantasies I loved, I absolutely adore and just fall in love with their music, I love it, I listen to it all the time. Huge part of my childhood and now my adulthood. And I'm sorry, but the music in Final Fantasy 16 is just forgettable. None of it's bad. It's just, there's literally like four or five songs you listen to the whole fucking game. You know, the, the kind of um, reprise of the uh, Final Fantasy song that we first heard for the first time from the Baron Red Wings from Final Fantasy uh, 4. There's like a version of that. The combat music is really good. I don't really remember the boss music, uh, but the combat basic getting in a fight music is pretty good in 16. I'll give it that. The traditional Crystal Final Fantasy soundtrack plays when you're, over, you're on the map, but it's... Pretty forgettable. That's what you mostly hear. And then the town music, which is pretty much the same. So there's not a huge variety. There's no song in 16 that's bad. It's just there's really not that much variety. And if there was, it was so forgettable that I just didn't remember it. Um, music's forgettable. Uh, how the gear and stuff works in this game, again, doesn't feel very RPG-ish. Uh... I know they've, they haven't really done the full-on equip system since Final Fantasy VI, with the exception of Final Fantasy IX, they went back onto it, you know, where you equip a weapon, accessories, chest plate, you know, boots, gloves, whatever. Um, but, uh, I'm, I'm still torn on, on how much that adds when they do do the full gamut of gear to equip and find, but... I mean, Final Fantasy XVI was so shallow with even finding treasure chests or anything worth of value, it didn't really impede on it, so it is what it is. Um, now here's another big issue, the party design. One of the coolest things about Final Fantasy is you have parties, right? In 6, you have all this huge cast of characters you transfer between. Same with 7, same with 4. 4, you're, you're kind of bound to the story of who you bring where, but in 6 and 7 and 9, you can kind of choose people who go with you, your main characters. There's only one or two characters that you're forced to have at certain points in the story. But in this game, you're, you're just Clive the whole fucking game. And you have your dog with you the whole fucking game, but you can't control, especially if you put an accessory on, he's just auto-controlled. Um, and yeah, you don't really worry about him. Um, when you, you're randomly, depending on the story, throw out two or three different characters in there with you, like Sid, Joshua, Jill, 
Um, and, you know, the other guy, I don't remember his name. Starts with a G, but I don't remember his name. Anyway, it, it, it moves them around, but you never really control them. It's not a traditional Final Fantasy party. It's pretty much you're just running around. Like, it feels like Devil May Cry. You're just running around with these little NPCs that kind of help you, but not really. That's not how Final Fantasy used to be. One of the funnest parts about Final Fantasy game, and again, built more character development, is choosing characters that are in your party and, and having, you know, building them up and leveling them up and gearing them up and making them fight. Doesn't exist in 16, a huge fail in my opinion. And then my final complaint is the world map feels dead. Now, it's been tr pretty traditional in Final Fantasy games that you start off where you're walking around the world map. You can go pretty much anywhere with restrictions into towns and find things in forests and whatnot. Then eventually you get like, you know, a ch chocobo where you can ride around and not be interrupted by fights to eventually a ship and then an airship. And then the airship you can fly around and go anywhere. And that's where you find all these secrets, you know, in late game Final Fantasy, single player Final Fantasy games, you fly around and you find areas to go, you know, like in Final Fantasy 7, where you had to find how to get to the uh, the Golden Chocobo, you find how to get to the hidden caves and the Ultima weapons and stuff in 6, where you'd fly around um, and find secret villages and, and, and secret things to unlock, like Sabin's Final Blitz and certain skills and espers. Same with uh, Final Fantasy 4, you fly around and find all these hidden, all this hidden shit for the world fully by then. It doesn't exist in 16 because it's literally like an instant teleport, just icon map where you run around and it's you can't fly, you don't get an airship, nothing. Just, at the end of the day, because I'm going to wrap this up now, I know this has gone on way too long, it would have been even longer if I scripted it, but, end of the day, Final Fantasy 16 does not feel like a Final Fantasy game, because of all the things I just listed. Especially the story problems. Now, if this game was not released as a Final Fantasy game, it was just an action an RPG, I'd give the game a solid 5.5, 6 out of 10. It was, it was okay, it was worth playing one time. But as a Final Fantasy game, it's, it's, Maybe a three, three and a half out of ten. It just doesn't feel like a Final Fantasy game. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a while. My, my content's rolling in slowly. I've had a lot of health issues recently and some things uh, going on in real life, but I, I'm still working through. But I'm back, and I'm going to start putting out more content, start streaming again more on, on, on Twitch. I may move over to a kick. We'll see. I don't know. But start streaming some fun shit, guys. Thanks for all the support. Comments down below. What were your thoughts on Final Fantasy 16? Uh, did you like it? Did you hate it? Um... Was it your first Final Fantasy, or you've been a long-time fan? I'd love to hear about it. Anyway, guys, this has been Raziel. As always, my friends, keep it real.